if I don't spend time on mobility and flexibility, like I'm just gonna get worse and worse. Yeah. I already, I mean, this is my good side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do one of those as well. Keep it simple. And do y'all have any espresso here by chance or no? Okay, I'll go. What are you gonna do? I'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be just fine. <laughs> Pinch myself. <laughs> well, do, remember in class ever holding your breath to make sure you didn't fall asleep? Yeah, yeah. I um, did that until I passed out. Did you actually? Yeah, it's a little bit counterproductive, isn't it? Yeah. Well, teacher's not gonna get mad at you. I don't, think, I don't think you understand how Thank How you. shitty of a middle school, high school student I was. That was like max ADD days. And so I could not sit in class for more than like 10 minutes without fidgeting at the least, falling asleep at the most. Gotcha. Also, cheers. Cheers. Boom. Let's hear about this bachelor party weekend. Dude, it was, it was not good. It was a lot of fun, but yeah? I'm going down. Okay, so I'm the best man for this. Yep. I'm planning it. I know very few people going. Obviously, I know the groom super well, one of our, our hometown guys. And uh, I've got like a loose plan. I want to have enough flexibility for us to like, be able to do what we want, yeah. but also have things to do. I was going to say, like, how much time spent on the logistics getting all this ready? Because I feel like that's always sneaky hard and more than you think. I didn't spend as much time as I did just like mental energy being yeah. like, ah, I should do this. But it was, it's a long one, right? We got in Thursday, like, I got in at one on Thursday. I left Sunday night because I want to catch up with Keller. Mm -hmm. But the key things were, Thursday was just like chill, people get in different times, whatever, make sure we hit the grocery store. Friday, we did a boat from one to five. Mm -hmm. I don't want to plan anything after that, you never know what's gonna happen. One of those double-decker boats? No, but we did have two slides going off the back. It's outrageous. It was a blast. Um, and then we did a brunch on Saturday to get us downtown. Mm -hmm. So I'm like worried about these logistics. I get down there and immediately feel like shit. Like, I was like, oh my god. We did the berries class that morning. Yeah. It's feeling mm -hmm. good. Got on a flight. Not start, I don't know, flight's like a little weird. I'm like, man, I'm so tired. So I went there, took a nap for two hours, woke up, said hi to people. And we're about to go to dinner, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I gotta go to bed. Wow. And so what kind of sick? Just uh, sleepy, achy? Uh, super sleepy. I think I had a fever that first night, actually. Interesting. Okay. Which, like, I, for work, if we're going to the office, I test for COVID all the time. Yeah. So at least it's testing negative, like. I was gonna ask if you got a test. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Test is that I got back too. It's all negative. So uh, I, at this point, I hope so. Hard to say. <laughs> but uh, I was in bed from 5 p.m. to 10 a.m. the next day. Wow, all right, was and that enough to cure you? No, Friday was still tough. Called up for the boat, obviously. Didn't make it out much past that, yeah. just too tired. I feel like on a trip like that, if you weren't the one planning it, if I wasn't the one planning it and I felt that bad, especially if I tested negative and could fly, I'd be out. Dude, I wanted to go home so badly. Yeah, but, but again, when you have that on your shoulders, you can't. Yeah, this is my best friend, I gotta be there for the thing. So each day I progressively felt healthier, but then also like was able to go out and like drink more. So I, I never felt good. Yeah. Uh, and I basically limped home on Sunday night. <laughs> and now back you're till midnight. And now you're here on Monday drinking. Exactly. Too late. Yes. Yeah. You're gonna recover someday. <laughs> yeah. Dude, speaking of my mom's birthday today. No yeah. way. Oh, yeah. I gotta tell her Shoot her a text. And then mine in two text weeks. Text right now. She'll appreciate that. Did I actually get her number? I don't. I'll get it to you. Right. My uh, my sister and I made her a playlist for her birthday with 61 songs. <laughs> so tacky. Because she's 61. And uh, I, know, I put that together. And it came with like a how-to on Spotify, right? Like here's a uh -huh. playlist and then we'll actually show you how to use it, which Megan of course works for Spotify. Yeah. So she's well equipped. Got to. And she's actually Megs in Stockholm right now for work. Dude, that's at, so fun. Uh, at the mothership. Yeah. yeah. Which, her girlfriend's birthday is actually 
the 22nd. Okay. So yeah, a week from today. And they're doing a, um, Megan from Sweden is organizing an event on Wednesday, so in two days. Okay. And it's gonna be a morning run in the park with Kelly and all of her friends. Aw. You should come. I'm running. On Wednesday? Yeah. yeah Wednesday, there. like 7 a.m., meet in the park. I think you said like four to six miles. Think you can do that? I can definitely do that. Um, I am going out with Maria on Tuesday, but it should be fine. Okay. Yeah, another rally. It's about time you moved out here. Yeah, I know, I know. You've been trying to pull me to New York for a long time. <laughs> just, so we got you, and you were the last domino before Kai came as well. Yeah. It, like within seconds of hearing that. Yeah, well, you know, that was actually uh, asynchronous. Like, we, uh, we oh, were I not remember. coordinated at all. It was that St. Pat's weekend. Yeah. St. Pat's weekend? Is that what it was? I mean, it was definitely March, right? Yeah. I don't care what the specific weekend was, but yeah. We told each other at the same time. Classic double book. Dude, so I have a, I have a physical calendar on my wall. Really? Yeah. And you put everything on there? Not everything. What about, like, meetings? No, no. I put evening plans or, like, social plans. Yeah. And then I just do in the bottom, like, I have, like, initials for, like, w various workouts I do. So, like, for berries, I would just do, like, hit or, like, S for swimming. Um, and that's more of a retrospective thing. But, like, putting plans up there, like, flights, yeah. weddings as soon as I know about them, all these things, it's the only thing that keeps me somewhat locked in. Yeah. So, uh, I have the same, it's just an Excel. So, it's literally, Dude. like, it's a calendar of the full year. And then I map out all the weekends in that year and where I'm going. And especially when I was traveling for work, this like so much better. kept me grounded. Without <laughs> this, because I didn't have a home base. There were some times where I would be living out of a suitcase for like a month, not like client to somewhere random to client to another state. Yeah. Uh, and trying to find somewhere to wash my <laughs> carry-on full of laundry. Uh, and I'm telling you, showing this, up with a bag full of laundry. I actually picked this up from another consultant, and he was like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna send you the file. You need to do it." And uh, it really did keep me sane. I, and I should say, relatively sane. I was still a bit crazy during that time because yeah. I don't know. I'm like a home base and routine guy. I like the uh, chaos and variety, like we were talking about. But I do feel like. To be able to do that, you need you to need have... a couple things to keep you grounded. Yeah, you need like a nest. Yeah. And and for me, that's less so the place, it's more so just the consistency and the routine. At least for a few days of the week. Yeah. Um, but dude, it's the only thing that like helps to figure stuff out. And I will say, things get flaked on all the time. So I got like lines through like four different things on one day. Yeah. But, at least I know. Because it's a, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of people who will have like, say yes to everything, which I like, but will say yes to multiple things at the same time, yeah. and then last minute make a decision on what they actually want to do, and that, that's a bit of a pet peeve for me. Oh yeah, for sure, that's inexcusable. I'm not going to lie, like, there was a time, like in high school, yeah, where in high school the game was, I want to be doing the coolest thing. Yeah. as possible. I'm gonna hear all my times. options and then make yeah. a decision. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And obviously when you get older, that's just not tenable. Like if you yeah. want real relationships, then you can't flake. Simple as that, you just cannot flake. Yeah. Uh, but now, moving here, I get to say yes to everything. I mean, that's, <laughs> especially because I don't have much to do right now. Yeah, I'm you're just, chilling. You doing the same thing? Uh, yeah. Yes, a couple more of those. Two more, please, thank you. It's either Lisbon Art or um, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I've been doing, uh, you know Quartal? Yes. Do you know Quartal? No. It's four words at the same time. Okay. So you yeah. get like nine guesses instead of them, but like you do guess for one, it tells you the letters for that match for all of them. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, me and my oldest sister, Britta, do that every day. Yeah. We're pretty close to it, and we always send each other our scores. That's a great um, family group activity. Yeah, it's nice. Do you win? That's the time. <laughs> For now and then I'll get like, feel like, I don't know, just like tired and maybe hung over trying to do Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. You seem a little uncomfortant when you say that. Uh, I had a bad stretch recently. Yeah? It's like you Losing get a bunch streak? where it'd be like, the word is let's say, um, 
<laughs> oh, somewhere it's just like one letter can be off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Where it's like the word is poker, and I put in joker. It's like just like burning turns. So you get like two or three of those in there. Yeah. And you just don't have enough guesses. I got to get in on this. It's good I time. do feel like um, I'm going to need a way to like stay connected with the fam yeah. when things get busy. And that's such an easy one to do. Like if you're playing some silly game and you can talk trash about it. Just do it once a day. It takes 30 seconds. That's all you need. Totally. Oh, well, I do it. So 11th Street Cafe, top shop I mean. I go in almost every morning. I go in, have my coffee, do that. Usually have my backpack with me, and I start working out of there. And it's just like a good couple minute activity before. So what's the routine? You do your uh, 530 swim? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm getting back into the morning thing. I fell off a little bit, just because like, I had a lot of late night things. Yeah. Um, I used to like, oh yeah, fuck it, like, I'll still wake up at six or whatever. But now I'm like, it's worth it to get to sleep. So I fell off that a little bit, getting back into it. Uh, but wake up, work out, shower, go to the coffee shop, get my coffee, check my phone a little bit, and start yeah. working. That's a great start to the day. I mean, I told you, I just got this um, unlimited coffee membership at Brett. You know what oh, I'm talking about? Brett uh, Manager. I don't, I don't even know how to say I'm it. I'm not going to make you say it. Yeah. <laughs> I nailed it, right? Uh, it's 30 bucks a month for unlimited coffee of all kinds. Wow. Yeah, which if I get a coffee a day, see a coffee now, like a latte, is like six dollars. Yeah. Especially if you get some like fancy milk. And so um, it easily milk pays for you? itself. You strike me as an oat, oat milk guy. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I am not someone that's um, a vegan, vegetarian, or anything like that. But yeah. I do think that it just tastes the best. Does and it? it also makes me feel better. Like. Milk, I'm not lactose intolerant, but milk makes me feel a little funny. Dude, I think so, a lot of people are in that boat. Yeah. Where it's like a little iffy. Yeah, well, I know you can't do cheese, my guy. I'm not a cheese guy. <laughs> not a cheese guy. That is like, that is such like a, more of a challenge than I would have guessed. What, like, avoiding cheese? Yeah. Well, it's just like you go out, uh, go out with people, like everyone's getting, you get appetizers. Next time you're at a restaurant, look at the appetizer section. There'll be eight things. Six of them are like cheese. So we not went even to, like there's cheese in it. It's yeah, like especially if it's bar food. Yeah. So when we went to um, White Horse after pickleball, you've been to that place, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like right down the, the street from you. Two blocks away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's classic bar food. Everything was fried or had cheese. Yeah. Or both. It's great. Dude, I'm telling you, such a good day. Wake up, pickleball. We just went straight there. We didn't even like go home and Dude, shower. I, that's what we did two weeks ago. Yeah. I like I had to leave White Horse to go shower. I was like, I'm we're gonna, disgusting. We're gonna call it the White Horse Pickleball Club. Ah. Yeah. I like it's that. Pretty lame, unoriginal. But. Yeah, not very original, but who, who, what do you get out of being subtle? You know? Yeah, yeah, we'll work. A little too on the nose. We, we can get better. Um, I like that. But yeah, always open tables outside. And so we sat there for a little bit, uh, went home. And it's actually not that bad for me to get to 115th and come back. It takes like 25, 30 minutes. Because the one is so close. Yeah, the one's close. And also, the 2-3 oh the the Express, the 2-3 Express is fast. Oh, you know is it? About? Yeah. I never, does that, that takes you to 14th stall, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. So the one drops off at my stop, which is 116th. And you can transfer to the 2-3 at 96th or 72nd. Okay. And then it only stops at Penn Station and one other stop before you Maybe get like all the way to 14. Rockefeller or Times Square or something? Uh, Times Square. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Um, okay, so the Notre Dame Water Polo Boys in New York, There's there were four of us and we all lived off the one. So we're going to do a bar crawl. but. <laughs> Just stops off just the one stop by, by stop. our res respective locations. Yeah. And now that you're off the one, you can join. Yeah. Well, I don't think we should go all the way up to mine. Yeah. Well, maybe we start there. Uh, yeah. We can do that. Yeah. There actually are some cool spots around there. Um, yeah. And I'm really close to the undergrad campus. Nice. So, uh, but again, those are undergrad spots. So, cool, but I'm not going to hang out much See, there. Uh, pretty old. I did go to the um, the gym on the actual campus oh, yeah, for the yeah. first time like this rock? morning. So it's exactly like The Rock. It's, uh, 
So it's in a basement, yeah. right? You actually go downstairs underground to walk in the front door. So does that and have like it goes, the, the gutter windows along the top? No, no, no. Like it it's, goes, it, it's just straight basement. Okay. No windows at all. It goes three levels deep into the ground wow. after you go one level deep. And uh, it is like a dungeon. Uh, I don't know about a pool. I didn't explore the whole thing. I assume okay. there's a pool in there. There's a basketball court and then there's a weight room. And uh, it is just like the rock where the equipment's 20 years old but they still have everything you could possibly need, right? Uh -huh. So it's like the opposite of Equinox, which I hate Equinox, right? <laughs> I think it's so stupid how like, it's not about the actual fitness, it's about the atmosphere and the soap and it's all that. It's a vibe. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and, and they charge for it too. This is just bare bones and you can get a great workout on it. It's like not ventilated well, so it's kind of like steamy and gross. It's like, um. It's like if Bane were to work out in a gym, that's where he would be. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. well, basement suits him. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> I didn't even think about that. The sewers in New York. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then running along the West Side Highway. So nice. It's just a dream. Yeah. So nice. I think one of the coolest things about this city, and, and very like thoughtful that they were able to plan this, is the fact that you can just run continuously along the river as long as you want. Yeah. So. More on the West Side. Yeah. What, what does it look like on the east side? Interrupted? Yeah, I think they like technically have it continuous, but it kind of like weaves in and out like yeah. around the Brooklyn Manhattan bridges. Uh, once you get north of that, I think it, it comes back to normal. I'll tell you what, like in this um, New York community, it's wild how many smaller small... than you'd think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like these small world connections where it's like, oh, so-and-so knows so-and-so. Yeah. It happens all the time. It so. really does. Yeah, it's and good. Keeps people honest, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's what gossip is for, right? <laughs> to keep people honest. I do think that gossip. Not gossip, but like a reputation is useful for rewarding the right types of behavior. Yeah, yeah. Reputation. No. That's why I shouldn't be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who should we gossip about right now? <laughs> Um, this is kind of the opposite thing, but one of the girls I work with, my pe one of my peers, she's the engineering manager for the team. She just is, wow, we just started working together, but like, I think this is a common thing, but I picked it up from somebody I used to work with in consulting. Or he'd like never say anything to me, but he'd, or like he would never say anything about it, but he'd randomly just like shoot notes to my boss. Mm -hmm. Be like, Dolph did this really well. Like, yeah. Dolph had this impact. Which is great, like it came at the end of the year, there was like a list and I didn't even have to put it together. It was just like a really nice thing he did without saying anything, without, it seemed like second nature to him. So I kind of picked that up. And she had no idea, she comes to me in like a one-on-one -on -one, one day and it's just like, my boss said that you sent this, that like I did this? I was like, yeah, that was awesome. He was like, oh, you just, do you, you just said that to him? Yeah. It was like, did it come up in conversation? I'm like, no, it was just like good. Like I never talked to her boss. Uh, I just like shot him a note, um, and she was like, "It's really good. I'm really gonna try and do that." Yeah, <laughs> and it's like kind of started to spread a little bit through some of the people we work with, which is that's like really awesome. nice. Yeah, and I do feel like you're right. That's the exact opposite. Yeah, and I, um, I mean personally, like I try to counteract the inclination to gossip, and yeah. the best way to do that is to find some mechanism like that. And it's funny, like it's great to say something to somebody, and I do that directly, like. That's great, but like the amount of trust you get with somebody when they find out you went to like someone who like whose opinion matters to them and said something good and like incredibly so, you know, you weren't just like making shit up like this is the most amazing person ever. Yeah. But like they did this and it was really impactful. Uh, it just creates so much more trust in the relationship. Yeah. Speaking of ego, uh, I don't uh, know if I <laughs> I don't know if I told you this, but I went on a um, a meditation retreat. No, you didn't tell me. Two months ago? Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, I meant to tell you about it. <laughs> it was it was a very interesting experience. Was it good? Yeah, no, it was, it was like in the mountains of Colorado, outside of Denver. And it's definitely the type of thing that I could sit here and try to explain all day and it'd be insufficient, right? Mm -hmm. Words just cannot describe what it's like. But, and also, I mean, talk about like the most stereotypical thing of, 27 year old young professional <laughs> could do in 2022 is go on some lame meditation retreat. Uh, it's, it's definitely like, 
there was a time where that used to be niche and different, and now it's it's pretty mainstream, right? And th this place was that. It was not. It was like secular, and it was for beginners, and it was just three days. It wasn't okay. one of those like ten days with like just a blanket and, and you can't could talk, talk the whole time. So there were some times where we couldn't talk. Okay. And uh, I do think that there's some value to that. Uh, it's a really beneficial experience to learn from a teacher, to be in a group. There's a group of like 20, 25 people. Yeah. And there's another one of those situations where um, this is even like more of a random group than these business school people, right? These are yeah. people from all over the place all that over. are super diverse, like some young, some old, some with uh, significant other, some not, uh, just thrown together in the weirdest environment possible, <laughs> you know? Where, yeah. like, yeah, sometimes you can't talk. Like, you're sitting at a table and you're just eating and not saying a word. <laughs> but then the times you do talk... Did that drive you nuts when you, like, had to be around people and not talking? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that said, I was into the work that we were doing there, right? So I think that the teacher was really good and she made it all make sense. Okay. To the point where I wasn't thinking to myself, like, this is silly, what are we doing? Like, I, I wanna ask these people about their day. Uh, and yeah, long story short, we got there Friday, okay. and we did like three hours of meditation Friday night, and then Saturday, all day long, and then Sunday for most of the day. And then a lot of people split and went home, I stayed. But the cool thing was, it was in this setting in the mountains in Colorado where they had almost their own valley. And it was like a compound, a cult. <laughs> That's not a cult. It was. Uh, Wasn't gonna say anything. It was still like it was very um, in the wilderness. It was pretty Spartan. You could stay in a tent. That was an option. I did not pick the tent. They had a lodge with dorms, like these tiny rooms that just had a bed. So very like bare yeah. and simple. Sure, you and, didn't need uh, much. What's that? Sure, you didn't need too much. Like yeah, no, no, you didn't need too much. And at the end of it, I was actually thinking to myself, man, how much of the benefit was what we actually learned versus not using your phone for three days? <gasps> I think uh, a tech detox is, was amazing, right? That, that is was, nice. That was well worth the trip. Yeah. But, and also, to, you have to figure out how to sit, too. That's Dude, part of the reason why you need a teacher is because, I yeah, you're not flexible. I can't do it. You would not be able to sit like crisscross, which I can't either. I had to use like a special elevated seat <laughs> to be able to do it properly. And not, I, there are some people that will sit in meditation in pain, and that's part of it, is to like Get, see like the pain. Like the pain in their hips? Yeah, I, oh. I don't know. They like see the pain, accept it, and just like lean into it. And that's yeah. like what they focus on. The, uh, our instructor was like deliberately very gentle. She was like, no, you need to like shift and pivot until you find something that is really comfortable yeah. that you can maintain for that long, no matter what your strength and flexibility is. That was a 2021 New Year's resolution for me. So by the end of 2021, I wanted to be able to sit crisscross applesauce without it hurting. How'd that work? I was able to do it by the end, by December. What did it, yoga? I did, I stepped up how much I do yoga. Yeah. And I specifically did like a couple hip things when I was like watching TV. But now I fell off it, can't do it I was it gonna say, are you back? <laughs> no, it's horrible pain now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there are some people that do like the, the crisscross where they, you know, put their- Their feet up. Their feet up like this. Yeah, and that is impossible. Do you remember our yoga instructor in uh, Chicago? Yeah, Sam. Sam, so I went to like do the sit on your feet thing, like feet under butt, and I was like, I can't do it, like it hurts. And I'm like, this far off, right? Not close. Yeah. I sit on the highest side of the block when we do that. And she's like, where's the pain? She's like, is it in your like, ankle? Or I was like, right here in my knee. She goes, yeah, I don't think you're supposed to sit that way. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's simple. I mean, I feel like that's, uh, that's part of the game. It's probably true, but there's like some ways that I could get better, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to figure out like what's a physical limitation. Maybe I shouldn't push like that. Yeah. Like I was talking about running a marathon. Like, I think that there's a wall there that I just should not go past. Mm -hmm. Versus when are you just being soft, right? Yeah. When can you just smash through and do the thing? Or when is it just like, hey, if you did this four times a week, 
you'd start to see very small incremental yeah. improvements. Which I do think, um, like getting older, I'm starting to, I mean, there's another thing about like mindfulness is like you can listen to that voice screaming in your head when you're sprinting on the treadmill and you can decide, oh, this is a problem or this is not. Like when yeah. we were in the class the other day, my knee fired up a little bit and I was like, all right, this is a problem. Yeah. I should just slow down and not like, push it. If I don't slow down, I know it's going to hurt for four days. Yeah. And I'm or not going to be able to work out. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I think the biggest risk to fitness and health for me is that there really are no risks except for injury. And so if I were to do something like that or like fall on the treadmill and fly off. <laughs> that poor girl. That was yeah. tough. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I mean, that's why I try to mix in yoga once or twice a week. Because it's, if I don't spend time on mobility and flexibility, like, I'm just going to get worse and worse. Yeah. I already, I mean, this is my good side. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got, I recently got a um, uh, back soper scratcher. Yeah. Because I just, like, couldn't get part of my back. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. Yeah, man. I've got a, Rough my sister life. got me one of those Theraguns or the Hyper Ices. Yeah. And with that, I can still reach all over my back. Okay. It's got some length to it. There you go. Yeah. We're, um, I know, we're just so troubled. So tomorrow for BT, we're actually officially switching warehouses. Oh, wow. So, Big and, and the cutover, of course, is when warehouse B starts fulfilling and warehouse A stops. Yeah. And, and so they're both gonna have inventory at one point so they can, you yeah. don't have no t a time of no fulfillment. Exactly, yeah. We, um, man, we're getting somewhat close to running out of product because That's sales amazing. have been so aggressive. Are you getting another batch started? Yeah, the next batch actually starts August 29th. Wow. And we're making... Happy birthday. Yeah, I know, right? We're making much more than last time, so scaling. It's amazing. Like, I, I think that a certain amount of optimism is necessary to do anything important. Uh, but too much yeah. is the opposite, right? Exactly, yeah. You, you, you can be an optimist and push the envelope and, like, believe that things can be created that weren't there before and do it, right? But then there's dreaming. And there are a lot of dreamers out there. <laughs> but I feel like the problem with dreamers is like the, so many of them aren't executors. They're like just idea people. Yeah. Some of them like self-proclaimed, oh, I'm just an idea guy, right? I'm just an idea guy. I'm not gonna like actually do the thing. I just, I just come up with the ideas. Yeah. That is ridiculous. I also think like if you've never done the thing, then you cannot come up with the ideas. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a mini rant. Yeah, really against idea people. No more if, ideas. If someone says they're like an ex exclusively an idea person, and they're not Just willing to like lazy. put in the work, yeah, yeah. Which I think maybe at some point, if you're like a consultant, for example, eventually long enough down the road after you've done the work then you can just be an idea guy so then you've developed this like sixth sense for like execution problems challenges you like anticipate that with the idea yeah the biggest thing is like pattern recognition yeah right you've just seen this so many times that you can uh extrapolate what's happened before adapt it to this particular situation and then make an insightful decision in like rapid time one thing i anecdote i really like from uh Thinking fast and slow. Did you ever make it through that, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes. My oh, my yeah. system too made it all the way through it. Yeah. So when he's talking about writing a textbook, and they like fly through the first couple chapters, and they're like the whole team's talking about it, like the publisher who's done a million of these is talking about, it, and they're like, oh, okay, like what can we do? And they're all like brainstorming, and these are like brilliant minds, and they're like. Oh, whatever it is, like six, seven years. And they're like, oh, that's, or like five years. Like, that's amazing. Like, this is so great. And he flips the question. He asks the publisher specifically, he's like, what's like the fastest you've seen something like this come together? And he's like, oh, I don't know. How do you put it that way? It's like maybe like nine years, 10 years. And I think they ended up doing it in like nine and a half years. 
Really? And it's just like, we're, people are just so bad at estimating, particularly when things have gone well previously, that like historical comps end up being so much better most of the time. Yeah. And like obviously there are exceptions and like you need room for things to totally break the mold, but like very often they follow those patterns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean estimation projection is one thing that I feel like everything we do is based on it. We try so hard to predict <laughs> the future. And obviously we're terrible at it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Uh oh. I lost my napkin. I think it'll be alright. <laughs> Hopefully tables at a bar can withstand <laughs> a mug on them. Dude, I went to a networking thing at one point. It's like this recruiter for like a VC fund. And so it was like she knew a bunch of people she had placed at different companies. And I was like, cool. I just met her to meet her. And like, uh, this is right when I started Etsy, so I wasn't looking for a job. And I met all these people. And I showed up late to this drinks thing. And they were like, what's like a, tr tell us like a, Childhood trauma of yours. Childhood trauma? And I was like, oh, wow. that's like so funny. And I was like not buying it for a bit. And they just like kept pressing it. So I was like, shit, all right, do it. I'm like, what is like something that's not gonna be weird? But like yeah. a childhood story that could theoretically be traumatic. And so I told them the story. And at the end they were like, oh dude, we were just fucking with you. I was like, come on, man. You can't like press it for 10 minutes. Are you serious? Yeah. Also in a networking event, in a work setting? Yeah. So that, that's that was asking tough for, for trouble, especially childhood trauma. There are some answers. That I gave I gave a very vanilla answer. So when I was I lived in Germany as a kid. Yeah. Uh, we visited a castle one time, and in the cannon room, I got my head stuck between the bars, and it took us several hours to get me out. Yeah. Oh, that, it's more of a funny one. It's funny. I know mine, and it is. I accidentally killed my sister's hamster. It's fucked up. It was, <laughs> dude, it was devastating. She cried for like three days straight. Oh, sad. It, oh, and it was purely an accident. It wasn't like, a, what's it, the uh, the kid from Toy Story's name? Sid? Sid? Yeah, it was not a Sid situation. <laughs> it was, we were playing hide the hamster. We would literally hide it in the room somewhere, random. Okay. And it would be like, in the sock drawer. And I put it, and, and you know, it gets progressively harder and harder as we get more creative with the hiding spots. Right. And you do hot cold. And I put it in a, a CD case. This kind of, this dates me, right? Or this is back when we had <laughs> CD ROMs. Uh, I put it in a CD case and it had a lot of room in there, but I guess no air. Yeah. Yeah. And so eventually, hot, 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 she found it. And oh man, that's tough. Yeah, it was, it was bad. So again, like that's the um, how torn up were you? Oh, I mean, I, I was devastated. <laughs> yeah, right? sure. It, she was so attached to this hamster, and we had like a funeral in the backyard and everything. Probably uh, just a couple of puddles out there. That's my like vanilla answer to the um, what's your childhood trauma, right? When it's something that <laughs> is appropriate. Right. For You're like, what can I like share a, with people that's not gonna be yeah insane? Yeah, that I shouldn't. You know, like there's. Trauma for the therapist, and then there's trauma for like some recruiting event. Yeah, <laughs> which should never be a thing. And they were like, they were pressing on me for so long, and I was like, okay, I'll do one. They're like, but huh. should have known. Just kidding. We did an icebreaker at work one time. It's like, what's your favorite way to eat a potato? Favorite what? Favorite way to eat a potato? Like French fries, tater tots, baked potato. Like, there's so many ways to eat a potato. Anyways, this one designer who I like a lot was, she's like, oh, it's like my favorite on-the-go snack, a baked potato. A baked potato? Yeah. On-the-go? And to this day, I don't let her live it down. I'm like, a baked potato is not a travel snack. Like, I would never be driving on a road trip and unwrap a foil, like, baked potato and start eating it. Was she serious? She, I think she meant it in the context of, like, she would stop somewhere on a road trip to eat a baked potato. Get a baked potato? I, don't, I, I still don't quite get it. But it's like now it's like a good bit between us. Yeah, that is a good question. I mean, that's like a universal question that everyone can answer. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what your diet is, you're eating potatoes in some form. And obviously the answer is waffle fries. 
I, I was a French fries guy for sure. Uh, <laughs> no doubt in my mind. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to Chicago. <laughs> like a whole damn tray of French fries at 1 a.m. <laughs> I still do that sometimes. I'm proud of you. You still get McDonald's at 2 a.m.? Done in a time or two, yeah. Good for you. Fall asleep before it gets there most of the time now, but it's all right. <laughs> But like, I woke up on Friday morning, I'm like, I need to be in my own bed for two days. Do you have any idea what you had? I don't. Um, you know, again, knock on wood, not Rona, but I got, weirdly, I got strep throat like six months ago. So maybe I'm just getting some of the vintage diseases. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good that we're now a little more conscious and it's of kind of a we're sick of and like, not getting others it used sick. to be like, oh, you should just tough it out if you're not feeling great. And now people are like, wait, hold on, that's like way more damaging to you yeah. and others. But first time I got strapped, funny story, it was uh, Hell Week uh, for water polo season, my freshman year of high school. And I did the whole summer, I'd been a swimmer forever. And I, Hell Week is mostly swimming, or like a good portion, like the hardest part is typically swimming. Uh, so I was well positioned for it, but between Summer League and Hell Week, there's like two weeks off. And my mom kept being like, you should train. Like, you should go up to the pool and just do stuff. And I was like, I don't think I need to. Like, this should be fine. Like, none of my friends are. She kept saying that. So I wake up morning one, Monday morning, go to the first workout of the day. I feel like shit, and I'm going really slow and like just doing poorly. And I was like, wow. Once again, my mom was right. And then, uh, you know, my dad's a pediatrician, so I go into the office between practices just to, like, see my mom and, like, that's um, what I had going on that day. And I was, like, kind of saying it, like, not feeling great. And they're like, let's just swab you for strep just to see. I'm like, cool, whatever. Um, and I, they must have put it on ice or something. But, like, I went to the second practice and, like, still feel like shit. I come out and then, <laughs> at the end of practice, my mom's like, are you doing okay? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm doing like fine. She was like, well, you have strep throat. So I came back, got the antibiotics, had to take like two, three practices off maybe, and came back to it. But like, there's a period where I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, my mom is so right about this. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to have that access. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Also, there's a, uh, God, I sound like such a New York nuke. There's a uh, halal cart guy right next to my building, and I'm already, nice. a, I'm already a regular there. Love that. And I became a regular at the Pret today. The guy... He recognized you today? So I had the, the membership thing, the $30 a month thing, and he, um, he says, were you here this morning and yesterday? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, that's me.